All right, YouTube, how you doing today? Um, I want to try to show you all of my Swedish army surplus that I carry, or not carry, but I have currently. Um, now some of this stuff I I uh, resell it on eBay, but um, and I use pretty much everything I have unless it's something I think I'm I'm selling, then I won't use that because I don't want to use it. Um, and I sell, I resell stuff because uh, you know it helps support buying more stuff. So um, you know. I do have a store on eBay, but I don't make, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars um, doing that, but it's enough to buy more product that I can keep and uh, use. So let's start here. Um, I'll just try to get some of these things off top of other things first. So I've got some um, gloves, obviously. And also these wool liners for the gloves. Um, these things are actually made pretty well. They've got great stitching. Um, it's leather and uh, they seem pretty rugged. Um, although if I'm doing some heavy work or something, I'll probably wear, you know, cheaper gloves to do. So let's move that out. Um, what else do we have here? So I've got, you know, just um, boot brushes. So, nothing special. Kind of a dauber. And then two different um, larger brushes for shining and cleaning. Right, so here I've got some canvas and leather um, gaiters. And this actually comes in, uh, they have some different versions. This one is, I believe it's from the 1959 uh, era, but I don't know. It's got the three crowns. Um, these things are nice lightweight. I have not waxed these yet, but I plan on doing that. Um, they've got nice leather strapping and buckles. Um, another thing that I really like, and I got this thing for about $34, but this thing is from the 1940s to 1950s. This thing's in excellent condition. When I got it, it was unused. And I've been using this for the last uh, six months or so. Um, you really can't find stuff that is built this well these days. See all these uh, brass fittings on here. It's got the little um, belt loop that stays and then this one moves. And then of course you have the length on it. Um, this thing was a, a lighter color, but I've been using um, like OpenOffs LP on this to help preserve it and keep it hydrated. Um, I really love this. I, I work, I live this, excuse me, I work, I wear this at work just about every other day and uh, when I'm just at home. Okay, so then here we have the uh, bread bag, and this this is one that's reinforced with leather. So they do have an all canvas one without any leather on it at all. Um, this one is reinforced with leather for the main hook in here, as well as some reinforcement on this strap. Um, this thing can go on to your duty belt, that's why it's got the clip, and then these things will um, fold and then button on these sides to give it some more support if you want to put it on your belt. Um, they also have a removable um, 
shoulder strap, which I stowed inside of here. Um, so you can take a look at how these things are built. Um, a little bit of oxidation on the brass fittings, but I could clean that up. Uh, currently, I'm trying to sell this one on eBay. Um, but most people don't want a Swedish bread bag. So if it doesn't sell, that's fine. I'll just keep this and use it for myself. Um, what's interesting with these, you got it's, it's kind of built very similar to the World War II German bread bag or maybe the German one was made after this but you can see here you've got two pockets inside but that's the strap um, so you can carry some of your food and maybe a canteen inside I think that that's why this is here is for the canteen to strap through that um, but you know I don't know I wasn't in the Swedish army and I've never seen anybody put all these things together but that's my that is my idea on why that thing is there the other thing is maybe this is where you put your um, mess kit and strap it through these and hang it over there I don't know if you know better then you can put some comments on this all right next um, so this one I think this was called the MG bag but it's just a it's just like a pouch I'm not sure if this was made to carry um, you know magazines or what it's for but I, don't know, I like this thing this is made very well, so you can see all the fittings on here, the sewing. Um, somewhat small, but uh, it'd be good to put, you know, like your fire starting stuff in there. You can also um, tighten this up using the strap that goes through the side, and then you can secure it with that. Um, now I've got a bunch of straps here so these are all from the M58 M59 strapping so these are just to help lash you know obviously small things onto your pack or other areas um, and I just have a bunch of these just in case but these will work well with my LK35 which is buried under there um, who knows these things are always useful um, okay so let's go back to canteen so this is a more current one this is probably around 1990 on this um, you've got this hook so you can hang this from your duty belt um, and then also they do make a cover uh, M90 cover which I don't have I don't really need it though because I don't have any M90 camouflage um, I don't have too much as far as clothing besides the gaiters and the belts um, and I just don't like to wear uniforms much <laughs> I did that when I was in the Marines anyway um, here's the older one so this is about a this is probably made in the 50s, 40s or 50s. Um, so it's an aluminum. So underneath this cover, it's got aluminum. Um, I don't really care for this because they, they never even used any, uh, you know, what did you call it? Like it, um, they didn't coat the inside. So anytime I use this, it kind of tastes like... Uh, aluminum so I think I'll probably just get rid of this you know sell it for like five bucks or something but uh, the only reason I kept this is because it, it's similar to all the the old ones I have I used to have some older packs from Sweden 
and I just wanted to keep that look the same to use this instead of the newer ones. Let's get those out. Now I've got a lot of stuff, so you have to be patient here. Um, here, let's go to this little flashlight. So, um, basically, this is the newer version. They also made this in metal, but this has different covers for that light bulb. Now, I upgraded this with um, an LED to make it brighter. But this thing's kind of large. Um, now, these, this strap here is made to go onto your button of your uniform and so you can carry this on your um, you know on your person and it just holds it on your chest or you can carry it but you know you've got this little button here so I can turn it on I can also put it in if I want to signal if I'm at night, I'll put it on the red and I can signal to somebody and say, hey. All right, and that uses, uh, I think, a C battery inside. Okay, what else we got? I've got uh, a ton of bags. So, um, this one here was made, I believe, in the 1920s to the 1939 or so. Uh, this is a waxed um, accordion bag, I call it, because you can see here, and you've seen almost all of this stuff on previous videos that I've had. Take a look at this, how you can expand this stuff. Um, so you've got three pockets in here. You've got the small one, you've got the medium right after it to cover and then you've got this dump bag right here with a drawstring on top um, this thing's really rigid because like I said it it was probably uh, waxed you know 80 plus years ago um, this thing is heavy duty and this thing has different ways to attach it so you can hook it on to things um, you can, um, you know, put it on a belt. It also has a shoulder strap on here. Um, I did buy two of these at one time, and I sold one on eBay, and the guy was using it for fishing. I might do that as well. I was thinking that uh, if I go visit Alaska, I may um, bury you know, pick berries um, with this. It's got a nice little, uh, I don't know, like a plate inside of there for rigidity on that. Really like the way this thing looks. I'm not sure how pra practical. And I don't know what the original use of this thing was. I have not found anything about this at all online in videos or anything. So, um, just wanted to show you that. All right, what's another one? So, I like this. So, I guess what this bag was for was so that you could carry all of the, um, I think it's like a hazmat testing bag. And you can actually kind of see in here, they still have some of these inside to say you know if it's nerve gas or yeah i don't read um swedish but i just wanted to show you some of these things um but basically i believe it's a, a hazmat type of thing um what's cool with all these little um pouches on here is that you can use this for fishing um that's why I bought it and I thought it looked cool um, see here there's there is a uh, a second like kind of cylinder like pouch here which you can put your um, fishing pole in 
and then we've got um, a separated pouch inside of here as well as a flatter pouch right there um, so I do carry this to work or if I'm going fishing it's made very well so you, you see here you've got this little loop and I believe that this is so you can attach it to your belt so it doesn't flop around it's got a shoulder strap obviously close this up of course we've got the uh, stamps on there now I wax this myself and it's got this nice leather on the back so this thing's heavy duty I like the way it looks I use it kind of like a satchel um, sweet uh, let's go into the shovel. So I used to have the old like, uh, M 1912 shovel, which I sold, um, and I had it because I, I used to have an M 1905 um, Rensel uh, knapsack, and it tied in with it. But since I sold that uh, Rensel, I got rid of the shovel as well. Now I have the M, is it an M58 or M59? Anyway, um, this thing is nice. So this is just all steel with exception of the aluminum nut on here. But this thing has an ergonomic um, bend in it. Um, a large steel... Um, and a blade on this. Um, I've sharpened. I've sharpened one side of this, and uh, the reason that these things have holes is for a couple things. Uh, number one, um, all of the Swedish uh, shovels can be hang on these hooks, and these things also are used to attach this snow blade onto this. So this thing, holy smokes, I'm gonna knock everything over. Um, anyway, so with tension, you can put this thing inside of these slats. Um, this is what I keep in my, my vehicle during the winter times. Um, I've saved um, my forklift at work from the snow as well as people on the road and people around uh, my house. I've got them out of jams using this. I haven't used it on myself yet because I haven't got stuck in the snow. But it's good to keep it in there just in case I do, right? Um, now, they also make a, a, mil, a mil tech version of this. So what you're looking at, if you're going to buy a Swedish... Um, and trenching tools you want to look see if they've got the three crowns and then I guess what happens on these Miltech ones I don't have one but you see these rivets so instead of these being all um, round like they're gonna be more a flat type of rivet on it so if you're just looking at pictures and stuff like that look for that stamp and then look and see what the rivets are now Almost everything I've seen online, they never show those rivets on the back. But if they look flattish, then it's a Miltech. And I've also heard that the Miltech one is made nearly as as strong as these old ones. But uh, I don't have one, haven't used it. Um, this thing's a beast. Um, which goes back to the hooks. So... Um, here is a longer hook, which is nice. So these things hook in in the, the hole. And if you have the older Swedish uh, entrenching tools or shovels, um, these things just fasten there. If you have the, uh, the bandolier, the bandolier has these hooks built into it. And the purpose was to you know carry these. 
Now these things are, are kind of nice because you can use it to hook whatever you want that fits into there. So these are spring loaded. Um, this is a very old one. This one is made out of brass on the hook. So it's even older than the other one. Um, subsequently they made these shorter ones and the longer ones using you know steel uh, what's cool with the steel is is that obviously it's tougher so it's I, I was wearing this and carrying my um, shovel and you can see where some some mark where since it's um, not as hard as steel it'll wear out quicker using it that way and like I said, I use all this stuff so I don't just keep it. I'm not wearing this stuff every day, but I do use my stuff. Uh, so the, here's a M58 or M59. Um, I guess it's what do they call this. It's like a, a tool holder. And so then you can use this to carry the shovel. And then you would put this on your belt, obviously. And then you've got this strap, and then you can put the strap around here and carry this on your duty belt once again. So they come in a couple different colors. I've seen them on eBay and stuff like that. So some of them are more the, the greenish brown or green, and then more brown. I mean, they got some weird colors on there. Uh, so there we go. Um, let's go to axes. Oh wait, here's another little strap just to show you. So this is just a tool. So you can clip this onto a tool and put this around your wrist. So if you're working in some area where you might drop this stuff and lose it, um, you just hook this onto, say, a wrench or something like that. And then you've got it on a tether so you don't lose that uh, it's just a little tiny thing I got um, I don't know I haven't used it yet but I will okay let's go back to those axes so you've seen these things before as well um, so on these Swedish um, army All right, sorry. Uh, that's what happens when your wife calls in the middle of this. And I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. I know I talk slow. I don't speak 100%. I still have effects from my brain surgery and stroke and all that good stuff. Um, anyway, let's go back to these axes. Um, so I've seen them in two sizes. And I don't know if they make a hatchet or not. I've never found a, a hatchet from the Swedish Army. But... They might be out. I'm just showing you what I know. Um, so if we take a look at these, you can see um, that this one is about 26, 27 inches long. Take a look at the the head on this. So it's um, much longer. Uh, it's heavier. Uh, watch my old videos. I think I I weighed these things. Um, anyway, in, in my experience, this is about the same size as a uh, Grand Force Brook uh, small forest axe, where this is closer to the size of the, um, gosh, what is the larger one, the, the Swedish uh, forest axe or whatever it's called. Anyway, this is the larger version. That's the smaller one. Um, all of these have a hole in it. And I don't think that this was made to show that it's surplus for sale. I believe, and I don't know, but I think this was made so that you could fasten this onto um, equipment, you know, like the side of a, a vehicle or something like that. Or maybe hang it if you want to run some cordage through there and here um, I think this may be to put this mask on and then you've got something to tie it on I don't know uh, but uh, I do also have this 
mask. So they made these things in um, like a brown leather and then also this um, green leather. Um, these things are nice. This, this one was made in 1942. This was made in, is it 1942? I mean, this is from Colifor's Brooks, which gave, got out of uh, business in about 1968 or something like that. Um, like everything I've found from World War II was made by this company with the KB and then whatever year it was made in. Um, after they went out of business, then stuff was made from, uh, gosh, I can't remember the names now. But anyway, um, they made, you know, different uh, axe makers made the Swedish army ones in the same shapes, you know, after this company went out of business. Um, these things are nice. Uh, I believe this is an ash haft on both of these, but uh, I'm not a hundred percent. But yeah, I've I've used both of these. And, uh, in fact, this was so old. Um, I was using it, and you see how the wedge came out. I haven't re-hanged um, this uh, yet. Um, I will because now it's loose so this thing has been in storage probably for 50 60 years or something like that so um, I think that all I'm gonna need to do is just get a new wedge and reset the wedge I may have to replace the entire shaft um, I'm just not using any wood right now so I haven't been trying to fix this um, all right, gosh, I got too much stuff, right? Okay, um, so let's go to um, food stuff and gas mask stuff. So here I've got three different uh, gas mask bags. This is what the M36, I think. So these were started, um, they started making these in 1936, I believe. Um, you see they've got different colors so this is the gray and green version and then here is the like olive green and brown and I've got multiple ones now I, I really like these bags because sometimes I'll carry this when I'm going shopping or visiting places so I've got you know like in my opinion a manly um, type of bag to carry stuff so I've carried uh, jackets and cell phone inside of here and, and different stuff inside of these I really like the way these things look and that's why I have multiple versions of this and then of course you can see as you've seen before you can keep your um, mess kit inside of there or a mask uh, gas mask um, I mean I even I even acquired one of those by buying the gas mask and the bag together I think I got them for like 15 bucks or something like that um, and then I just resold that gas mask by itself got my money back and I had a bag um, because these things are so old it's it's very difficult to find these things these days and then uh, you know typically they they cost quite a bit depending on the condition so if you're looking at these online like on ebay or something just look and see what's the condition of the leather on here so this one is pristine like it was almost never really used i've used it to carry my um, mess kits before but um, the better the condition the more it'll be i mean i think they're trending around 70 bucks for ones that are unused or, or in grade one or grade A type of condition. Um, anyway, I really love those things. Okay, so let's go to the mess kits. Um, inside of that bag was the stainless steel one. Here, obviously, I've got the uh, aluminum kit. 
then over to right here this is the what is it the m1895 um the older version that was made up until was it 1940 when they started making the stainless steel version of this um i just got one of these because like i said i had that that 19 uh 13 uh, rental pack and I just wanted to have some stuff to attach on to it so I from the same period and I, I haven't used this one I have used the steel and the aluminum ones and I really love love these especially the stainless steel one um, you know it's kind of heavy but you know I'm not I'm not doing the Pacific Crest Trail or something like that. So that weight doesn't really do too much for me because I'm I'm usually at 10 miles or less. You know, maybe 20 at max, and that's not that big of a deal, at least for me. You know, I'm not one of those uh, people that goes for everything's all ultra ultra light type of thing. Um, so here's some more straps. So these were specifically. They're the right length so that you can lash your mess kit onto your rucksack or your bread bag or whatever you want. Or you can just put it on there. It keeps it from clattering. If I have an inside of these bags, it doesn't really clatter, so I don't use it inside of these bags. But if I'm not using the bag, I may throw one of these onto my mess kit just to keep it from rattling. Um, also, so we've got these little tosses or tuxas or whatever you want to call it, but these are just little um, cups that go inside of the um, mess kit. That's why it's shaped this way. You can also hang it outside of your ruck with those holes. Um, these things are nice. I I have probably about 10 of these. Um, they also make a commercial version of these, which is shaped pretty much the same. They just use a, a softer plastic on it versus these issued ones. Anyway, those are nice. Okay, so I've shown you this one before as well. So this is just the... Uh, was it an M58 or M59 uh, web belt? It's got these nice pouches on here. Um, inside, I know I bought this. It was unused. Got it on eBay for, you know, I, did, I think I paid like 20 bucks for it, but I had to pay like 15 bucks for shipping. But it had even these straps. And I haven't really seen what how you're supposed to wear this i don't think that this little pack on the back is actually supposed to go up by the shoulders i think this is actually supposed to be worn on your belt down here so that's why you've got this and i think what these hooks on the top are for the straps so you can carry your uh coat or your um shelter half um, but I found that you can also carry this you know up higher on the back of this um, I don't know this I've, I've used this with my son for Boy Scouts and stuff like that and I gave the Scoutmaster um, one of these as well and he really likes it um, I know I like it I think it's kind of neat all right, so last thing. So you've seen my LK70. I don't have enough room to show, but it, anyway, it's hidden in there. Where my wife doesn't see it. I've got two ver I got two of these LK35s right now, and you've seen that around. Um, it's just a great all-around pack for different stuff. Uh, I even have some. Uh, waist belts I can use if I want to and add it onto there um, because I can use the uh, belt from the LK70 and put it on there or I've got my Alice pack belt stuff like that 
And then I've shown this one before too, but this is a one and a half meter strap. And this thing is made so you can lash stuff on to the frame. So this is the perfect size to go in there. It's made out of leather. It's the green leather, obviously. I think it's made it from uh, moose or elk leather, but I'm not sure. Um, but this thing's great because if you take off that bag off of the frame, then you can use this to lash stuff on. Um, you know, or you can hang extra pouches you know put this around and then hang pouches off of it if you don't want to modify your lk35 which i don't like to modify my stuff like not permanent modifications i mean i'll put different stuff on there but i don't like to sew or put holes or cut straps or something like that to modify my stuff. I like to keep it in whatever condition that I found it in or revert it to that if I put some kind of modifications on these things. I'm, I'm just kind of weird that way. You know, you can find plenty of videos about people, uh, you know, cutting things or adding things, riveting stuff or whatever they want to do to these things. I don't like to do that. Anyway, sorry, it's a very long-winded uh, video, and uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you have some questions on any of this stuff, you can always post it, and uh, thanks again.